What's up, Heat Nation? Your boy Ernest here, and I am back on another Miami Heat Talk adventure. Now, before we get started, you guys would really appreciate y'all to like to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Would really appreciate the support. Helps me grow the channel. Now, I wish I was here with better news, you guys, but unfortunately, we lose last night to the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, last night was a really big game, you guys. Uh, this was pretty similar to the game we had last year against Brooklyn. I don't know if you guys remember, but towards the end of the season, Miami and Brooklyn were fighting for the sixth spot, not to get in the play-in tournament. The Heat had a game against Brooklyn. We, If we won that game, we would have solidified ourselves as the sixth seed. We lost. Last night was similar. Both Miami and Philly were walking in with a 37-30 and 30 record tied for the seventh seed. So the loser would get eighth seed. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I saw that Jimmy Butler was out, I thought, oh no. Because Kyle, it was going to be Kyle Lowry's first game against the Miami Heat since he was traded. And I knew Kyle Lowry had this game circled. And without Jimmy Butler, without Tyler Hero, without Kevin Love, without Nikola Jovic, I knew Kyle Lowry was going to attack. And boy, did he attack us last night. Uh, Kyle Lowry yesterday throws 16 points, 3 for 5 for the 3-point line, 4 assists, 2 steals. And he, le he leads the Philadelphia 76ers in this victory. You saw Lowry hustling, diving for loose balls. Uh, I'm not going to say that I regretted trading him, but I'm going to say that I knew he was going to do that last night. I'm pretty sure his body's hurting like a mother today, so you're not going to get that performance for Kyle. But he had this game circled down. And as a sign of respect and to show y'all that I'm not a hater, I am wearing a Miami Heat Kyle Lowry jersey. This is probably the last time you're going to see me rock this jersey on this channel. So go ahead, bask in it, man. But um, respect to Kyle Lowry. I have nothing but respect for what Kyle Lowry did for us. In 2022, Kyle Lowry took 58 charges in one season. That was more than half of the NBA teams. Not players, teams. Kyle Lowry did his best for us in the 2022 season. He was our starting court, uh, he was our starting point guard, QB1. We didn't win a championship. And last season, he took a bench role, help us go to the NBA Finals. And I know that Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry were having conversations all season, you guys. I know that they were set on bringing a 2024 championship to Miami. Eastern Finals the first year, NBA Finals the second year, this would have been the year to win it all. But we wanted Terry Rozier, and I'm going to support that decision, especially come playoff time. I think Rozier is going to give you a lot more than Lowry did. So we're going to end that topic there. Thank you for the service, Kyle Lowry. Read between the lines from yesterday. <laughs> Anyways, so this game wasn't a great showing by the Heat. Uh, you get two players that crack 20 points, Bam Adebayo and Terry Rozier. They both give you 20. Bam, again, dominates on the rebound boards, gives you 13 rebounds. Uh, it was a bummer for Duncan Robinson. Um, I really feel this game, you guys. We only lost by seven points. Duncan last night plays 24 minutes, one for five for the field. He only gives you three points. Duncan was dealing with a back injury yesterday. So I feel if you had a healthier Duncan, because the game prior, he knocks down 30. Yesterday, he gives you three. If we have a healthier Duncan Robinson, we win. Haywood Highsmith, Caleb Martin, and Thomas Bryant, they all give you production. All of them score over 10 points. I've called Caleb Martin the glue guy off the bench, and we are seeing that. Caleb Martin is our sixth man right now until Tyler Hero gets back, and he's showing that he's good enough. Thomas Bryant, he's holding it down for Kevin Love, man, but we need Love back. I mean, I've said this a million times, you guys. Injuries. Injuries will hamper us the most. We know this. We know this is the this is the storyline for the Miami Heat and the Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, and Bam Adebayo era. This is what we're dealing with. Injuries. I don't care what this regular season record says. I do not care, you guys. All I'm asking for, all I am praying for is in the 2024 NBA playoffs. Dear Lord, can you give me a healthy roster? Because if we are fully healthy going into the playoffs, nobody wants this smoke in a seven-game series. I don't care if it's Boston, Milwaukee. I don't care if it's Cleveland. I don't care if it's New York. I don't care. The problem that the Heat have is the West. How can they win an NBA championship this year? How? Be healthy. Hope that Jimmy, Tyler, Caleb, Bam, and Duncan go off. And they win you games in the playoffs. That's the best thing I can say, you guys. We have players on this team 
individually, that can win you playoff games. Kevin Love can win you a game. Duncan Robinson can win you a game. Terry Rozier can win you a game. Tyler Hero can win you a few games. We, Caleb Martin can win you games. We saw it last year. We have a roster comprised of guys that can do damage in the playoffs. But what we need is health. So I don't care what our regular season says. I just hope we can get out of the play-in. If the Heat can get the sixth seed, we're gold. We're in a halfway, we're in a halfway, um, uh, we're only a half game down from the sixth seed. Philly got the sixth seed because Indiana lost last night also. So it is so close. So the Heat can get this done, you guys. I'm not worried. I'm not, I don't care. I really don't care about records. The only thing I want is to not be a play-in team. I just want that to happen. I want the Heat to get out of this play-in. I don't want guys like Jimmy Butler and Kevin Love to have to play added games that they don't have to. But I don't care. Wherever we get in the playoffs, I'm confident. I know people call me deluded. I know people call me biased. I know people, you can say whatever you want. But on this channel, you guys, what's the name of this channel? Miami Heat Talk. I am the voice of the voiceless for positivity here in Miami Heat culture. I'm the guy that steps up and makes everybody believe in this roster. Not because they're just words, because it's a fact. This Miami Heat roster since 2020 have been winners. Just because we have not won an NBA championship doesn't mean that we're a losing franchise. We've made it to the championship twice in the last four years. We've made it to three Eastern Conference Finals. And you know why the reason why I have so much pride and only real Miami Heat fans are going to understand what I'm saying. I have a wife. I have kids. I have a brother. I have a mother. I have, I have family members. And we've all grown watching the Miami Heat. When it's playoff time, you guys, we get together together. We have some drinks, we freaking, you know, we enjoy our time and we enjoy Miami Heat basketball. That run that we had last year, that Cinderella story, I watched every game with my family. It was a beautiful moment to have. And I'll never forget in 2006, 2012 and 2013, I was with my family. All of those times when we won the NBA championship. I have history as a Miami Heat fan. I bleed red, black, and yellow. This is my squad. I will never doubt them, but I will always be honest and I will always say if I truly feel if we have a shot and we do, how can we win it? We need all hands on deck. And this is going to go to my next topic. That man, Jaime Jaquez Jr. He is going to be key and pivotal for us in the playoffs. I think Jaime Jaquez Jr., can give us a way better productivity than Christian Brown did for the Denver Nuggets. And we saw Christian Brown win the Denver Nuggets games, not only in the playoffs, but in the NBA Finals. Jaime Jaquez can be better than that. Now, we've seen a great Jaime Jaquez. The first half of the season, you guys, we were all calling him Rookie of the Year. We saw him drop 30 bombs on teams. We saw him step up and take over when Jimmy Butler was out. But in the second half of the season, since the All-Star break, he hasn't been that guy. Now, I will say, his numbers since the All-Star break are very consistent. 11.3 points a game, 4 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 1.3 steals. They're very similar to his numbers for the season. His season numbers are 12.5 points, 4 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 1.1 steal a game. Very similar. But if you notice, before the All-Star break, Jaime was averaging close to 15 points a game. So his numbers did drop, and I think it's for two reasons. One, we got a little healthier. You know, in the beginning of the season, we were, Tyler was out for 18 games. Jimmy missed time. Bam missed time. Caleb missed time. So it gave Jaime the opportunity to step up. And that's when we all started calling him Jimmy Butler Jr. But lately, he hasn't had that. And if you noticed, his last five games, you guys, have been abysmal. The only successful game he had in the last five games was last game against Detroit where he dropped 15 points and gave you four rebounds, but he also went six for 14 for the field. That's because Jimmy wasn't playing. The other games, the other four games, he didn't even crack 10 points in any of those games. So is there cause for concern with Jaime Jaquez Jr.? Do we feel that in the playoffs, he's not going to contribute like he did the first half of the season? My answer, no. 
I think what we're seeing right now with Jaime Jaquez Jr., you guys, is just a little bit of rookie struggles. Now, look, it's not happening with Victor Wembayama, but when you are taller than everyone and the basket is like two feet above you, it's really not that hard. It's like me if I go to my daughter's school and play against all the kids in the daycare. I'm going to do good. No matter, what day of the, no matter what day of the year it is, I'm going to do pretty good. I'm not, I'm not going to compare him with Victor Wembayama. I'm not going to compare him to Chet Holmgren. He's a different player. So he's going through rookie struggles. And it's not only because he's not that tall. I mean, he's six foot six, 225 pounds. It's also because he's like the fifth or sixth option on this roster. He's below Jimmy, Bam, Tyler, Duncan, Terry Rozier. So the fact that Jaime Hawkins is able to produce these numbers with being the fifth or sixth option at times is very impressive. And I believe that when it comes to playoff time, we're going to see a different team. We're going to see a different locked-in team. We're going to see a different Jimmy Butler. We're going to see a different Bam Adebayo. We're going to see a different coach, Eric Spolstra. But it's up to these guys. The role players. Tyler Hero. Terry Rozier, Duncan Robinson, Kevin Love, Jaime Jaquez Jr., Caleb Martin, Nikola Jovic. We need these guys to be on point playoff time. So I want to hear from you, Heat fans. Are you concerned about Jaime Jaquez Jr.? Or do you feel like I feel? It's just rookie struggles. What do you think about that game against last night? How hard are you? Or do you not care because you think like me? The Heat are going to be fine. Let me know what you think in the comments, you guys. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It would really help me grow uh, the channel. We're on the road to 4,000 subscribers. Please, guys, 60% of you that watch this channel, you're not subscribed. It would really help me out. does a lot for me. Thank you so much. And until next time, your boy Ernest out. And that is enough said. Enjoy your day, guys.